Hey friends, it's me, the Ebony Otaku, the well-rounded nerd. We're, we're not even going to beat around the bush today because I really, really, really want to open this. So I don't like to brag, but I think I will anyway. <laughs> On Valentine's of 2024, my husband did the dadgum thing. You want to talk about somebody understanding the assignment. I have been wanting a dadgum titan for ages. Like since since I got into Warhammer really and I and I uncovered what a Titan was and and all of that. Like just you know just all oh, these giant mechanized human run battle machines just ah, just, just just everything cumulative that makes Warhammer great is in the Titan. Um, but Titans are expensive. <laughs> They're really expensive. He's actually in the process. He wanted it ready for Valentine's Day, but it's like 50 STLs to print out. He is actually printing me out a, a scale uh, Warhound, which that's going to be fun to put together and paint. That'll be its own set of videos eventually. Um, get a 3D printer. If you don't have one, get one. We have three. And I'm looking at one that I want. I'm uh, probably going to end up going with the uh, Neptune series. Because um, I want to print larger stuff. Um, and he prints needle things. So there we go. Everything's taken care of. But I really wanted a Titan. And he knew he wouldn't have one printed in time. So what he did was get on the Googler. And actually went to the Games Workshop site. And he found some unsold copies on the Games Workshop site of Adeptus Titanicus. This is a specifically a Titan-driven tabletop Warhammer game. So you are only playing with Titans. I know, right? I'm just as stoked as you are. So, for the uninitiated, and we're going to get into opening this box, um, because this just put a lot on the back burner. My heresy box down there, you can see it? You see it? You see that? Yeah, that was going to be the next thing I got into, um, because by the time this posts, like, it's it's the day after Valentine's when I'm recording this, like, after work, um, but uh, I was going to start this next because by the time I was going to get to that I should be done with my Yor, my Anya, my other five kill team members and my gnomes were pretty quick paints so I was just like well I'm going to get into my heresy box that was going to be my next thing <sighs> and then I opened my valentine's present like we we have such a good nerdy relationship because what I got him remember that little um air uh airbrush that i reviewed the portable one like we both have really nice airbrushes um but we like to go places in paint too so on hobby shop nights like if we go and do paint and take or brush and banter which you know you just bring a thing and paint and sit and talk to people painting classes or anything like that we take our stuff with us which you know the the whole air uh, airbrush setup can be a little cumbersome but that little usb one is fantastic and it's perfect for priming a bunch of stuff. I'm going to probably test it on some of this. Um, but I got both of us matching uh, uh, USB airbrushes <laughs> for Valentine's. And then we spent our Valentine's Day um, at another hobby shop that we really love, which kind of really focuses on models and painting. They don't really do, um, they don't have a setup for people to come in and game or anything like that. They don't sell food. Like the one that's near us, like they have food and like lots of gaming rooms and stuff like that. Like that's where you go for, for your battle tech and your, your Lord of the Rings and your D&D &D and you know, us, the, the Warhammers, that's where you go. They got all the scenery, the tables, the rooms, it's great. Um, but this place, it's just, it's a paint shop. They do painting classes, they make armies for people, it's, it's awesome. Um, so that's where we went for, for the Valentine's. It was great, we spent, um, we uh, both took off work early and spent the afternoon uh, painting. It was lovely. Anywho, but he he gave this to me uh, after we got home because he kept asking me, do you want to open it before or after we come home? My guts told me he got me something to paint. I just didn't know what it was. But I was like, well, I've already set my heart on painting these gnomes, so let me just not be distracted <laughs> by something else, which I'm glad I made that decision because this is going to take over my entire painting life. So anyway, I said to the uninitiated because excitement, um, 
the Titans are a very specific type of war machine. So if you're into the Warhammer War or not, uh, the Titans were created, well, run, created, however you want to look at that, uh, by the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, the Mechanicum are the, uh, they're the engine of the, the Imperium of Mankind. So all the weapons, the bullets, the ships, the drop, sh all of that, the armor, all of it comes from the Mechanicum. But it's a little different than the way we look at technology right now. Like right now, they would consider uh, the portion of human history we're in as far as 40K and 30K is concerned. We're in the age of human discovery. So all of the technologies that are going to be have yet to be discovered. And what the Mechanicum does is they don't create anything. They are basically eternal archeologists who resurrect uh, uh, human technology. And they worship uh, the machine god. Uh, the Mechanicum is based on Mars. Why? Because, I mean, when people, you know, start lopping off body parts and replacing it with mechanical parts, they, they get a little weird. So they, they're just off on Mars. And everyone in the Imperium of Man has just agreed to let the Mechanicum be the Mechanicum. <laughs> when the Horus Heresy has taken place, like the Imperium and um, the Heretics both need the Mechanicum. Some of the Mechanicum help the heretics. Some of them help the Imperium. They don't care. <laughs> They're all like, that's where the bullets come from. So let them do what they do. And that matters because in the universe of, four, when you get into 40k, religion is reestablished and it's worship of the emperor. But in 30k, when the heresy is happening, religion's outlawed. Um, but everyone just looks the other way. When it comes to the Mechanicum, because that's where the bullets come from. So they just let them do what they do. But one of the greatest machines of war that the Mechanicum has access to are the Titans. Um, the Adeptus Titanicus. It is its own separate weaponary legion. So you've got um, uh, Adepts in the Mechanicum that are dedicated to making ships. Some that are into the, the actual guns. Some that, that do this, the... Um, the armor for the space marines and for the adeptus sororitas you know they, they have their specialties there's a specialty for the titans and then there's legions within adeptus titanicus and the titans are mechs basically that's their version of a mech but they're still imbued with the spirit of the machine god um every titan be it a little one or a big one and even the little ones are rather large uh even the, from the little ones to the ones that are, are 30 meters tall they have a human controller called a princeps. Uh, the princeps, you know, I would most closely relate the Titans in Warhammer uh, to the Avas in Evangelion. In fact, wait here. I almost went and got one of my Avas off the wall, but uh, they are well positioned and we'll just have to do that in another video. But I have other visual aids. So, meet Shinji and his Ava. So, in Evangelion, um, which, you know, is the, the grandfather of modern anime. Respect Evangelion, whether you like it or not. One must respect it because a lot of what we do in anime today um, is made possible by our forefathers of Evangelion. Anyway, but this mech suit uh, is the result of an invasion of what are called angels on Earth in the world of Evangelion. They are not just giant machines attacking Earth. There is a very spiritual component to Evangelion. So if you're ever watching you're like, man, this is real religious, it is. Um, but basically what's happening in Evangelion is the end of days has happened and humans are trying to stave off the end of days and creatures called angels are attacking earth because these creatures here, the Avas, are the direct result of humans messing with the divine. There is a piece of the divine, an angel that crashed to earth at some point in human history, and Nerve, which his father runs, this is Shinji, by the way, um, which Shinji's fathers run, get Jindo, he is just the worst person ever. Um, his organization manages to recover that, but they also understand that there's gonna be more angels coming, so they take that angel being and develop these these giant mechs, but they're, they've got a flesh, a spirit, and a mechanical component to them. They're basically giant human flesh mech suits. It's weird. Like, it's so hard to explain. Like, if the, you ever see um, episodes of this and, like, there's, like, flesh bulging out of their armor, it's because they literally grew the, ma the material tissue of these things from the sample that was the original angel that crashed to Earth. 
these aren't just simply controlled by a pilot because of that. Because there is a literal spirit in here that fell from heaven that humans co-opted to make a weapon out of to fight basically its own kind, other angels. It needs something that can control it. And that's where kids come in. Because you know it's not a good anime unless children are being traumatized. <laughs> Iron-blooded orphans. Um, anywho... So these kids, and this one, Shinji, happens to be the son of the head honcho in charge, Jindo Ikari. He's the worst. Um, but Shinji is one of the pilots. Um, he's also uh, joined by two other young people, Ayanami Rei and uh, Asuka Langley, who are the two other pilots of two other Avas. Not just anyone can pilot these. You particularly need someone who has gone through trauma <laughs> and is too young to realize they don't need to be doing this. And could literally have a spiritual connection with this. So this Ava that Shinji powers is more than just the spirit of an angel in a mech suit. His own mother died in the creation of this. And her spirit is also imbued into this mech. So it has a natural link to him. Which is why in that first episode it reaches it, her hand out. And I'm saying her because it's his mom's spirit. Reaches her hand out and protects it. There's like a whole accident that happens. You have to go back and watch it. And it's one of those anime you have to watch 45 times in order to get it. And after you watch it 45 times, you're still going to go, yeah, it's a whole thing. <laughs> but um, when Shinji first confronts this beast called an Aba, he loses his mind because he looks at it and its eyeballs are bulging and it's looking at him. It's got these big old teeth and it's like, ah, and he can hear it and he loses his shit. And then stuff starts like, you know, going left around him and there's scaffolding falling and it reaches its hand out over him and protects him and he realizes there's a connection and he agrees to pilot the Ava when he sees his uh, fellow young pilot Ayanami Ray, who has been hurt in the most recent angel battle. They're about to send her back out into the battlefield and she looks like death. So he's like, okay, I'll get in it and I'll do it. But that's, this is closer to the concept. I, I did all that for, to explain what a princeps said. This is closer to the concept of a princeps than like a mech. So like in Gundam, it is a straight up mech suit. Um, I would also look to uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth. That would be another example of a spirit imbued machine uh, that is being piloted. So if you've ever watched Magic Knight Ray Earth, which that just one of the best magical girl series ever. Thank you, Clamp. You did the Lord's work. Um, love that. Read and watched it a million times growing up. And now that I'm talking about it, I'm feeling nostalgic. <laughs> and I'm probably going to get on the crunchy roll and watch uh, Magic, Magic Knight. Uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth again, but three girls transport to another world. It's an isekai. It's a fantasy. It's a mech anime. It's great. Um, magical girl anime, the whole thing. Uh, but they are charged to protect the world. And part of the way they're going to do that is to resurrect the Magic Knights. But the Magic Knights are beings within themselves. They aren't just mechanical suits that they're going to operate. They literally have to have a connection to that suit and they have to go through a trial to prove to the mech suit that they are worthy of it and once the mech suit accepts them then they can become magic knights and you know fly off the main magic knight the red one is called ray earth which is why it's called magic knight ray earth but again it's more than just a mechanical suit that's being piloted like in evangelion or in um voltron or something like that they are living, breathing creatures on their own, but they also need a human in them so that they be, can buff, hit that maximum usefulness. Another one I would think of close to this would be like Escaflone. Wow, I'm being real like <laughs> nostalgic today. Well, if you ever watched the vision of Escaflone, whether it was the series or um, read the manga or you watched the movie, which I actually love the vision of Escaflone movie. It's, it's close enough to the series but just anyway I digress but Escaflone the mech which that's the name of the big mech that's in that's why it's called Escaflone um that one requires a sacrifice of blood so the whoever drives it Escaflone is also a spirit the the people of that particular world it's another isekai kind of mech suit kind of thing going on um you have to literally give it your blood for it to work <laughs> um and it will it will drain the life out of you because your life gives it life i say all of that because the 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 concept of what the titans are it is beyond just someone in a mech and they're huge 
So the smaller ones, yeah, they might be as big as a house. That's still massive. And there's just a single person operating that, a princeps, someone who's in it um, and, and is um, one with the machine. Uh, it's not even so much that they are controlling the machine. They have a symbiotic relationship with the machine, which allows them to get the machine to do what they want. Basically, that's how a Titan works, which is kind of what they do in Evangelion. This thing could honestly do what it wants on its own because it has a spirit, but to achieve its full potential, it needs a human in it to make that happen. Um, I said all of that to say, Titans are pretty amazing. But the Titans get huge. So you start with the little ones, like your little Warhounds and stuff, and then you get all the way up, uh, you know, to the giant Titans, which can be 100 feet tall or more. Um, you read about some that are 30, 40, 60 meters tall, and they don't just have a princeps controlling them. They have an entire team. Like there's a bridge and there's people in the arms and the legs. There are servitors galore to make this thing work and to keep the machine god happy and to keep the princeps happy. And amongst the Mechanicum, one of the most honored positions you can have is to be a princeps running a titan. It doesn't matter if it's a small one or a big one. Obviously, more honor comes with the bigger ones um at the uh drop site massacre on istvan uh we know when horus drops the viral bomb on the loyalists and kills some of his own people as well um one of the groups that was able to make it through that were in a titan and the titan machine spirit and all of the workers and servitors and they were basically able to seal the titan off from the viral infestation that had been dropped from the skies and they lived through the viral bombing being in the Titan. So this is, they are serious beings, creatures, machines, all of it. And I wanted one. But I got more than one. I actually get six. So in this set, Adeptus Titanicus, so this is the full game um, that is here. You have the ability to play as uh, two sets of titans. You get um, two Reaver Titans, two Warhounds, and two Serastus Knights. So yay. Yay, 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 yay. <laughs> um, and I'm going to read the, the manual, but I'm pretty sure I can make these any legions I want because you have loyalist titans, um, those titans that remain loyal uh, to the emperor of mankind, fight boldly to stem the tide of treachery, holding the line on countless worlds as the war master's forces advance inexorably on Terra, the throne world of humanity. Their names include a such story titan orders as the imperial hunters, the warp runners, and the firebrands and the war griffins. And on the traitor titan side, you have the traitor titan orders a march at the vanguard of the war's master's host as they seek to bring the Imperium to its knees in the name of their twisted cause. Foremost in the ranks of infamy are such feared titan orders as the death heads, the death stalkers, the god breakers, what a name, <laughs> and the tiger eyes, names that strike dread into the loyalist forces wherever they're spoken. So, um, the scale on these, there's many different scale Titan models out there. This is for a specific game. You can play these. I think you can use these in Imperialis as well. There's a couple of other games, but definitely in the 30k universe for these. But like I've said before, when you have friends, like me and my husband were talking, I was like, well, can I only use these with this game? Well, when we're playing at home or just amongst our buddies, use whatever models you want. There, I said it. And I'm kind of a gatekeeper. When it comes to the Warhammer, I'm, I'm one of those people. Like when I'm painting Warhammer, I only use Citadel paints. I'm that person. But when it comes to friendly games, people getting involved, whatever. Um, you know, use the models you want to use. Um, but what, what that tells me in reading this is I potentially can paint six different Legion colors here. So what I'm thinking for my Trader Titans, yes, I thought of the Traders first. I'm pro-chaos, what can I say? <laughs> hey, I'm a chaotic good. I'm aware of it. <laughs> I am not neutral. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking my, my big one here, my Serastus Knight, I'm thinking um, I'm going to make that one a, a word bearer. 
Uh, the next one I want to do is The Emperor's Children. Fulgrim? Yeah, know how I feel about Fulgrim. I love me some Fulgrim. Um, but then I'm thinking my third one, the 80 b 81 my little Reaver. Um, I'm thinking that one is going to be Alpha Legion. I love the Alpha Legion, and I love that kind of uh, marine blue that they use. Uh, so, it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that. And for my Loyalist... I do have loyalists that I love. Uh, to match my heresy box down here, I think I'm going to go with um, Ultramarines. Rebute's not wrong. I'll keep saying it. Uh, the Salamanders, because say it with me, y'all. Vulcan lives. <laughs> but my other one was really hard to think of. Like, what is another loyalist legion? I'm just like, ah, uh, them. I thought Blood Angels for a second, but Blood Angels Red and Word Bears Red are a little, a little too close for me. Blood Angels is an option. I thought about the White Scars because um, I love the con, but it is so hard to get white white when you're painting it. Um, it yeah, it's difficult. Like, I've got a little model right now that I'm painting, which it should be painted by the time this goes up. Um, but I need to get, like, Wraith Bone White on some skulls on him. You know how many layers it takes? Even you prime in white, of course, but then it's just it's just layer upon layer upon layer <laughs> to get it to happen. But those are the ones I'm thinking about. Um, it's hard to choose. It's it's just it's just so hard to choose. And what's really great is because I these are also at least for the uh, Trader Titans. I think they um, are. You can use them in just like. Well, okay, let me not say that. I, I'm wondering if they can uh, be just part of, like, Chaos Unbound, but I don't know. I'll have to look it up because I don't know the rules of this game. I've not played this one before. Um, but, yeah. So, th those are my options that I'm working with. I'll decide. Uh, but we're definitely going to have a party to prime these, 100%. But let, let's open this box. Y'all know I can't do this without my handy little multi-tool. I'm so excited. Like, the, that, the heresy box just, uh, it's going to get built. It'll be done before the end of the year, obviously. Um, well, not obviously, because there's always more to paint. And Homegirl has a whole job. Um, but I've decided that if I am going to travel a bunch, which I think I am, I'm, I'm slated at least for the next few months to travel two weeks um, out of every month. I'm, I'm taking stuff with me. I'm going to pack my painting bag and, and just take it with me. Because, yeah, what else am I going to do? Oh, there are so many. I usually throw my trash behind me, but I need this box. So we're just going like, to set this to the side. There are so many pieces. Oh, my God. So I've done a couple of videos where we just look at, you know, what it takes to build. I think the last Warhammer build video I did, it was a Terminator squad. And I was like, there are some other ones that you're going to get that have way more pieces. So you really have to be careful as you're building things. To get the right pieces snipped and there'll be options and all this stuff. These are all the bits to build six titans, and I would wager that there are some leftover pieces in here, because there's usually options when it comes to weapons and certain stuff like that. Um, these are all labeled, and I know that there's going to be a book in here that tells me what to get um, from each one. Um, I cannot prime these on the, on the rack. So I, it tells you like one hack, you know, like you get your Terminator squad. There's not a ton that you're building there. Prime them on the on the little grid here, then snip them out. That's like a great hack. I can't do this with that. I'm building six different Titans, I'm, which I'm going to have to get a new storage system for, for ones this big. Because when I build them, these are three different scales. So I'm going here, here, and here. Um, which is going to be great. <gasps> Is that a poster? Oh my god. The 
this a poster? Well, my, my door to my office needs... Oh, y'all can't see my door. It's over there. Is there a mess over here? You know what? I don't care. There's my door. It's gonna go somewhere over there. Yeah. That's where it's gonna go. Yes. Um, so I have a poster. Oh, that's great. Um, stands for Titans. So you can see on their stand how the sizes are varied. The needle one will go on this one, the medium one, and the big one. So three very different sizes. The good thing, though, is they are all models that are bigger than just my Space Marines, my Gnomes, and other stuff, which, because of that, they actually become easier to paint the bigger they get. Like, the Warhound that's getting printed for me right now, it's going to end up being, like, it's going to be big. Um, oh, the dice. Um, it's going to end up being pretty large, so, which, even though it's going to take up a lot of space, it's going to be easier to paint because of its size. Um, there's a piece I'm doing right now is wreckage and scenery, and it's, it's no thing to paint just because of its size. Something misprinted, so we're going to use it as extra in our own scenery stash. But these are great. Look at the dice. Head. Oh, that must be the shot. Buddy. <laughs> Let's see here. Leg. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the six-sided die that have, you know, the Imperial and Chaos symbols on them. Oh, this one's got other symbols like radioactive and all. Oh, fun. Oh, I love the dice. Um, my dice collection is getting a little out of control. I don't need to buy any more dice. Decals that I'll never use. Um, let's see here. Where's the, is this the codex? Show no. <laughs> yes, the big book. You know, we're going to go ahead and open it because I'm just, I'm too excited. I cannot wait to start building these. So the way I'm going to build them is I'm going to, I'll probably do it as a video, because why not? Everything is content. Um, and, and just in case you're wondering how much was this, I did get him to tell me, because that beast down there, him, my little, my horsey box, he was $300, free tax. If you live in a state with sales tax, if you know, you know. Um, this is trash. It didn't go where I wanted it to. Um, that was $300, $299. This one, this box, he told me it was like 160, 180, something like that. And it, again, the way he, when I, I was like, how did you even get this? Because they don't make this game anymore. Like, that's something Games Workshop, love you, Mina, I'm a fan. But gum, good games. Like, we have been hunting literally all over the planet for all of the books and cards and everything that goes with Aeronautica Imperialis. Because when they get tired of a game, they quit making it. Um, they quit making the bits for it, and you literally have to go to the secondhand market and, and whatnot. We had a friend who went to Singapore. When I said all over the world, I meant all over the world. A friend of ours went to Singapore, and while he was in Singapore, he was like, Hey, I'm in a game shop that has the book for what you play. Do you want me to get it, and I will pay you back? And he was like, Yes, do it. <laughs> and then when he... Um, got that you know that I was awesome but he's found the book for what I play I play the Necrons um because I be Xenosin all over the place I play the Necrons um and he has found the book apparently with all the bits and the cards and stuff and uh that gum of that it's not also in Singapore <laughs> so like I've always joked I'm like there's some wife out there somewhere who threw away her husband's collection and that's where we'll find <laughs> the books to our older games but they quit printing stuff and you, you can't get it new but this one is because it was just unsold stock that games workshop still had i know right i'm bucktooth by the way when we go to the renaissance festival in may i'm going as princess tia beanie because she's also bucktooth so it works out that just means your front teeth forward and you can see them real easy it's nothing bad <laughs> i think it's cute <laughs> see I think my buck teeth are cute. Um, oh, so this is our rule book. Oh, it's so beautiful. Is there any good artwork in here? Oh, of course there is. See, they always got to start these books with somebody else's paintings. Oh, it's, oh, it looks so good. I'm a good painter. I'm not a great... Well, some people actually tell me I'm a great painter. But I don't know. I'm very critical of my own work. Oh, my goodness. You get all of the, like... The diagrams and stuff of each of these. So where's the princeps go in here? Let's see here. Let's see. We got plasma reactors, void shield, limb weapon, upper carapace. I'm assuming in the carapace or the armored head is where the princeps would sit in this. 
but it out it has the scale here to show you how big this particular titan is to a space marine so down there that's a space marine this is this particular titan this one is a warhound this is what my husband's printing for me right now is a warhound and he's he's going to be about this big to my model he's printing him to scale so that's going to be fun uh when i get that one so yeah it gives you um oh the reavers are huge um it get there's a lot i'm looking at this book and i'm supposed to be showing y'all <laughs> you get to see the mechanics of all of the different titans you've got some world history in here you get a little view of what the gameplay can look like oh my god i just opened that randomly i did salamanders it's real green let's see questorus knight crusader parasina uh, uh, armor of the renowned house Veroni, Scion Ulus Varum score. These are real words. <laughs> uh, in at least three major campaigns of the early Horus Heresy before being deployed, to blah blah blah. Doesn't say who they belong to, so they're their own thing. So, with the Titans, they may be loyal to a legion, um, they, they may be their own thing. So, I personally am going to go with Legion Colors because I'm that way. Um, but you've got all your rules. Oh, my God. You have all your rules in here. Here's another one. Mars Pattern Warlords. So, here's what the Warlords look like. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, but some options on painting. Okay. So, the, the color schemes I was going to go with. I'm basing my color schemes on Legions I love. Because, again, it's what I like. They're mine. And that's how I'm going to paint them. Um... So three are loyal, three are not loyal. So, and then you've got all your rules on how to fight in here. But what else is in this box? Um, I'm going to set you here. Don't want to bend anything. So, we've got... Oh, so these are like your stat cards that you've got for your Titans. You, in a game like this, you're always going to have statistic cards for what you're doing. For the smaller ones, you got stat cards. Let's see. Oh. This is the game deck. I'm not going to open that because I don't want to lose any. Oh, so these are tricks and tactics throughout the game. That's cool. We have our decals that I'm not going to use. Um, oh, it comes with a ruler. Yes, because you know you're moving forward. And, you know, some of us are hood and just use the tape measure. But it's great to have a ruler, which I might actually pull this out. Uh, but when we do one page rules or play other games, what are these? Uh, oh. Titan traits, things that happen within the game. Let's see here. What is this book? Adeptus Titanicus. Oh, this is the instructions on putting all those bits of plastic together. God. <laughs> I'm really excited right now. Like, I cannot wait to see them finished. But the work to get from, you know this <laughs> to this <laughs> read read three times cut once find a way to keep your pieces separate and with what they belong to until you're happy with it and when it comes to gluing them together I glue in terms of how I would paint them if I can just keep the paint flowing I will go ahead and glue the pieces together when I look at it. But if something's going to cover something else, I don't glue those pieces in place until after they're painted. And then I keep all my models separated. That way I know, okay, these are finished. These are not finished. This goes with this guy. This is my whatever. Um, because I also plan on painting a novitiate kill team. And I also want an Empress Children <laughs> kill team. I want my kill, except for the novitiate, I want all of my kill teams to be chaos. Because I'm that way. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that's, there's always more to paint. That, it's a hobby that if you get into it, it'll get you. It will get you. It'll get all your money. It'll get you time. But we do a really good job of balancing between our hobbies, like especially since I travel for work. My downtime in airports has become my read books time. And not just Warhammer novels. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a real big fan of like Asian women authors. Um, I love classic English literature. I originally went to school for English literature. So, you know, it's, it's time to like do that kind of like calming kind of reading and stuff like that. So, you know, 
just build time in. Like, I've got a couple of nights a week that are for painting. Those are the nights I paint. Whatever I paint on those nights, that's what I do. Like, I'm wearing workout clothes right now because this evening is a workout night for me. I'm going to a strength building weightlifting class because I'm a girl who likes to work out. I also do Taekwondo. So, you know, picking days to do certain stuff so that you can get all your hobbies in. Um, like there can't be such a thing as too many hobbies. Do we have too many? Probably. Like I've got a chicken smoking right now. I, we also, we're a grilling family. I like to grill. Um, cooking is one of my hobbies. Um, you know, just piece it out so that you can find time to do the things that you love and they don't become burdensome because we're at a point right now where our hobbies excite us and energize us. Like we can't wait to do the next thing. If something like feels oppressive to you, you're never finishing anything, maybe time to pull back and like re-examine like what's a hobby. Like, cause I'm finishing things. If I wasn't finishing things, I wouldn't add things. And like, I've made peace. Like I can put, I can put that together whenever I want. I can put this together whenever I want. It's just this, it's Titans. I want them now. <laughs> so they're going to get a lot of work. Um, and the more you do it, especially the painting and building, the better you're going to get at it. So if you're not perfect at it out the gate, it's okay takes time work on the skill go dig in the cast off bin at um your local hobby store where you know they're selling their their mistakes that they printed out for like a dollar use those to practice on um that way you don't like hurt your figures but there's like a little bit of love in your figures that you know you messed up <laughs> you know i don't have my original armies anymore i don't have my eldar army anymore my first necron army they got lost in one of my moves but you know i remember what they look like it's awful <laughs> You know, it's, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. You're, you're, we're learning and we will learn together. So I'll keep y'all posted um, as I get these built. But as usual, please like, comment, unsubscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Yee!